want to bring in Walter Isaacson. He is Perella Weinberg advisory partner, a Tulane professor, and a CNBC contributor. <laughs> He's also the author of biographies on Elon Musk, Steve Jobs, many, many other luminaries. And, and Walter, this is um, huge. really a big deal, especially after what we saw last week with the DOJ taking on It's Apple. totally huge. And in some ways, it's both sides of the political spectrum, especially in the United States, are taking on this notion of the bigness of the tech companies, for better or worse. And it goes all the way back to U.S. Uh, v. Standard Oil, where Standard Oil was tying its products to other fields so that you had to use their gas stations, their distribution lines. They would, and this was ruled illegal. And you're seeing it with U.S. v. Microsoft about 20 or 30 years ago. And now Apple, Google, Facebook are all in the line of fire. Are what these big tech companies doing similar to what Standard was doing? I mean, Absolutely. It's tying and bundling. Now, what Standard Oil said, what John D. Rockefeller said, is it's good for consumers. It makes it cheaper. It's much more efficient. And what they came up with back then is a standard that says there's two prongs, what harms consumers and what harms competition. And you shouldn't do either. And it's very similar, because if I search Google, instead of uh, necessarily sending me to websites now, it gives me its own products where I can make a reservation. I can go to a, uh, Likewise, Apple ties in its payment system to other things. This is good for consumers sometimes. Steve Jobs was great at wanting to have sort of one big ecosystem that was seamless, but it does mean competitors can't come along. And let's remember that if they hadn't done that to Microsoft when it tried to bundle search and browsing and everything into its operating system, you would not have Google now. Okay, that's a very interesting perspective. And one that makes me think this is going to have a lot more teeth than maybe some of the Absolutely. guests we have spoken to about this. Um, well, it's got Apple, a lot Apple of teeth because you Apple got the FTC. Doing, well, Apple has said that they're doing it because of concerns about privacy for their customers and concerns Ooh. about cyber attacks potentially coming in. Can you do it for those reasons uh, if, you're, if they can't prove that you're doing it for anti-competitive reasons? Well, it's true. Apple is doing it for privacy reasons, and it's pretty good. I like buying things through Me Apple too. because of that. Right. But it also means if you're CNBC, if you're you know, Time Magazine or something, you do not get direct contact to your com uh, consumers because they're the ones that control payments. In other parts of the world, we have these mega payment apps. We're talking about Elon Musk a moment ago. He's trying to make X into a super payment app where you can transfer money and do things on that. These things could not work right now in the Apple ecosystem, except for if there's pressure from the antitrust folks. And your point was, we're glad we have Google? I am. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. Well, no, but my point was... Well, how do you Google know that the Microsoft product wouldn't have ended up being... I, Google's got its own issues, obviously. Obviously, with seniors. but the point I'm is, kidding. we I, want I, I'm glad competition. We have but you're sure that innovation. this is you're sure this is the same with Apple. I'm not sure that it's directly comparable. The what we're talking about. Well, yeah. what, what's happening is it's comparable to me because it's actually good con for consumers. The way Becky said, which is your privacy is protected. It's one no, nice I, ecosystem, I, I, but it's bad for competition meaning these other payment systems, other apps won't develop. Right. And we want in America, where my students at Tulane, and they come up with a great idea of how to do something, they don't want to have to then go to a venture I capital think most of the time, saying Apple Yeah, I know, but Google most of the time, the, the competition in this country is from innovation and entrepreneurs. And, and it, it's not, I, I don't immediately think, wow, innovation is being stifled by these big companies. I don't immediately think, I think, that we, I look at, you the guests we have on, look at the 50 disruptors that we always talk about at CNBC. I don't think the government needs to come in and decide that Apple is too good at, at what it does. And companies, by definition, try to do better than their competitors. Correct. And it, it becomes a, a, a almost a subjective viewpoint about whether kicking your competitors' butts because you're good is different than using antitrust, uh, something that's that outlawed. That is such to, a key point, which is in America, if you get really, really good and do things, you can get dominance in your field, and the law shouldn't do anything about it. But what the law says, ever since U.S. v. Microsoft, is you can't use that dominance, say in the smartphone business, to then 
get dominance in an adjacent or other field where you're crushing competitors. You don't think that the current systems. antitrust sentiment from Lena Khan and from Cantor, it, it, you don't I think, think it's, they've, they've, the pendulum, I think they're off the, out of their minds, how far they've I think the pendulum, it. of course, has swung, and it's swung in a historic way, which is, it used to be this two-pronged approach. Hurt consumers, hurt competition. Both were bad. Then for the past 50 years, you had the yeah, Chicago yeah. School that said, let's just focus on consumers. It doesn't yeah. hurt the consumers, right. no harm, no foul. Right. That's sort of the position you argued a moment ago. Right. So, I think they're going back to saying there are two prongs. We no want to protect competition. competition as so, well yeah, as it's like, having, it's like the Fed having a dual mandate, but they decide dual mandates are hard. hard. Yeah. Yeah. We've seen the European model of mm -hmm. protecting competitors. How's that work for not innovation? Very well. And European, Europe has not been great in innovation. If you want to say what's going too far, the DM, the uh, Digital Marketing Act, which is what's being used this morning to go after uh, the big companies such as Google. But uh, I'm a little bit more uh, skeptical. So I, I, I'm trying to play this out from the market's perspective because mm -hmm. it's been these big tech companies that have really been driving things. Even this morning, uh, Goldman Sachs is saying they're looking at a base case still of the S&P ending the year at 5,200. Mm -hmm. But a team of their analysts is saying, look, we could see big tech driving it up another 15% to 6,000. If these cases um, are successful, even if they're not, if they drag out over a period of years, what does that do for the potential of these companies I, to yeah, flourish? I think your question of dragging it out over years is actually the relevant one. That's what happened with Microsoft. There are very few people who can actually remember who won in the end on the US v Microsoft, where they were trying to bundle the browser and many other things into the operating system. You know, uh, Apple uh, lost the original case, and they didn't do, I mean, Microsoft, uh, Microsoft yeah. lost the original case, uh, but then there wasn't a remedy of breaking up. But Bill Gates but, said it was like why they missed out on the, right. the phone. Right, and what it did was it constrained Bill Gates from doing a mobile operating system, from doing social media. Well, that's good and bad. It means that Apple gets to rise. It means that social medias like Facebook get to rise. We want the creative destruction of competition in this market, and that's what's going to happen with these cases. But, but they won't get solved. We but want they'll... creative destruction, but we don't want regulators to hamper companies for years, then lose the case. And oh, by the way, we got what we wanted anyway because or, or, we tied or them kill the money or kill years. the goose. We're constantly trying I mean, to kill you, the goose that laid the golden case, egg. If you can't win the case, if you can't make the case, then you shouldn't have been. And they do. Up for years. They, they throw it up against a wall, and nothing is stuck. So far. Well, you can go back in history from Standard Oil to IBM to Microsoft. AT&T. AT&T. Too late for IBM. And, and, yeah. well, Wait a minute. They broke AT&T up? Huh? Yes. It's back together. <laughs> it's back together. That's right. Yeah. Uh, that, I mean, that, that to me is the biggest issue. If, if you are doing this and you don't really have the law on your side, you just have the might because you're the government and you're big. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, but if, uh, they do have the law on their side. The lose, law if is... If they that, lose at the end of it, they're still effective. They still get their way. They won most of the U.S. v. Microsoft. And I think on these cases, where I do a search, where I do things where I want to pay for something, I want to have choice. If they force it to allow more choice, you're going to see things like digital payment systems, which are very clunky and bad these days, if competition is opened up and people get to find different ways to do payments, we, for example.